Hi, it's Pastor Paul Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is Satisfaction Saturday. It is that day that we thank God and we give him the glory and honor and praise that we can say my soul is satisfied. He has blessed us all week long. We're now at the end of the week. I need to pause real quick and say I am satisfied. I thank God for what he has done for all of us. And especially I want to say, God, I thank you for what you've done for me. Today marks 41 years ago today that I was licensed in ministry by the University Park Baptist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Palmer. Thank you, uh, who was a pastor at the time, the Reverend Dr. James E. Palmer. Uh, thank you so very much to Sister Leslie Devers and to Deacon Crawford and all the other deacons that were there and all of those from the University Park community who uh, did everything within their part to help to grow me up to be the person that I am today. I thank God for that rich heritage of Charlotte, North Carolina and that community that meant so much. Uh, today, University Park Baptist Church is known as the Park Ministries under the leadership of uh, Dr. Uh, Bishop Claude Alexander. And we thank God for the ministry of the park and all the lives that it has touched in so many ways. I guess for me personally, uh, this text today out of John's Gospel, uh, the third chapter, verses 1 through 13, about Nicodemus coming uh, at night to know Jesus. I can remember it was about 47 years ago uh, that I came to faith in Christ. And I'm just so grateful uh, that there were those who prayed for me and those who wanted to make sure I understood the gospel. Here in our text today, Nicodemus, uh, who's a ruler of the Jews, one who didn't want to be seen with Jesus around everybody else. He had a personal inquiry. It is amazing that sometimes uh, we have to have those moments that we steal away at night to be with Jesus. Nicodemus does something so powerful in the text. He arranges a late night meeting with Jesus because he did not want, as we believe, those other leaders of the Jews to see him meeting with him. He asked Jesus, the question and the question that you and I have to ask ourselves is that I know, uh, as Nicodemus said, that you are a man sent from God because of the great things that you've done. But I got a personal question. How can I be born again? Can I enter the second time into my mother's womb? Jesus allowed Nicodemus to see, first of all, he's taking it from a natural perspective. Jesus wants to take him higher to a, to a spiritual perspective perspective to understand that is not based upon flesh and blood, but it's something that God does with our spirit. Too often times we think about things from a natural and we forget that we are spirits that occupy a body. Uh, we're not bodies that have a spirit or have a soul, but we are souls that occupy a body. Nicodemus is concerned about the immortality of his soul. He wants to know how can he be born again? It lets us see Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. He knew about the religious way to do things, but he wanted to make sure I believe that he got it right. He knew that Jesus was one who was in touch with God. So he meets him late at night to find out how can I make this happen? Secondly, he says that Jesus, how can I be born again when I'm old? Can I enter the second time into my mother's womb and be born? Jesus reminds him, no, this is not about flesh and blood, but it's about spiritual principles. We must understand that Jesus let Nicodemus know, Nicodemus, don't be confused. We're talking about a new birth of your soul because sin and what sin does to all of us, it separates us from God. The word sin actually means missing the mark. It takes on the connotation of someone who has a bow and an arrow and you pull back the bow string with the arrow, you aim for the target, but you miss it. It's your intention to hit it, but you miss it. Too often times that we forget in life that we might have good intentions, but we can't quite make it. That's the reason why we need the power of God. God forgives us of our sins. Nicodemus has to understand that he cannot do this on his own. This is something that is done supernaturally through and by the spirit of God. Jesus begins to disclose this information to Nicodemus to open up his eyes, to help him to understand it's a spiritual principle. It's not a fleshly principle. We must remind ourselves of that because it is God's spirit that does the work within us. Lastly, he says that I want you to know, uh, Nicodemus, that you can be born again. But Nicodemus doesn't appear from the text to take the next step to be born again. It's so many times that you and I, we will take the inquiry. We want to find out how can I be born again? But do we actually take the steps to make it happen? The steps to make it happen is, first of all, confessing your sins. God, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. Secondly, after we have confessed our sins, we say, Jesus, come into my life. I invite you to be my Savior and Lord. 
Thirdly, we take the opportunity to read God's word, to be informed of what God has in store for us. And then we will know that God has done a great work in us through and by the work at Calvary. Had it not been for Jesus, death, burial and resurrection, we would not have eternal life. Jesus, we thank you for coming to earth. Holy Spirit, thank you for sealing us. Father, thank you for your divine plan. I hope and pray that you will get in touch with God and you will ask him to save you from your sins as I asked him to save me from mine. And then all of us can be brothers and sisters in Christ. And then we can be with God in heaven one day. And hopefully we'll see Nicodemus there as well. Hope to see you there, but let's do what we can while we're here on earth right now. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow in worship here at the Fountain of Raleigh. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.